I thought it might be a good idea to show you an example of how we use binding energy in something similar to what you might see on an exam. Uh, so, this example here, we have radium-226 undergoes alpha decay to give radon, which is given by Rn. Okay, so radon is Rn, radium is Ra. So the question is, first of all, to write out the decay equation. So this is what we were doing earlier. This is from, uh, you know, a few videos ago. Uh, this is sort of the fun part, I think. Um, so if we want to write out the decay equation, well, we know it starts out with radium 226, and this has 88 here. Remember, this tells you the number of protons, and this 226, that's the number of protons plus neutrons. Now this goes to, we're told it's radon, so we're going to put an Rn, and we know it does alpha decay, so if you remember what an alpha particle is, it's a helium-4. So I'm going to write down helium, the 4, and a 2 as the atomic number here. Oh, sorry, the mass number. Uh, well, we need to know the mass number and the atomic number. But in this case, a 2 goes on the bottom, that's the number of protons, and it's got four nucleons. Now, what goes here and what goes here? Well, that's pretty easy. I just have to make sure that 88 equals whatever this is, plus 2. So in that case, then, it's going to be 86. If you look it up on a uh, periodic table, 86 should be the uh, number. That's uh, radon, radon should be the 86th element on the periodic table. And if you look at this number here, 226, and then we have a 4 here. So this one here has to be 2, 2, 2, since I add 4 to it, and there we go. Uh, so we have a bit of a hint as well, because if we look at this one right here, they actually gave us the masses here. So we'll take a look at that in a second. So now what we do is the next question. So by the way, we're done. That's the uh, A, at least, is finished. That was easy. Now the next part says how much energy is released in the reaction. And we've been given the masses. So we're told that the mass of one radium atom is 226.0254U. Remember those U's. You could always uh, use them um, to get yourself uh, and to convert to the mass in kilograms if you felt like it. Because you could always convert that. But I don't recommend doing that. There's a reason why we use these weird units. Okay, so then we have uh, radon is 222.0176. And we have alpha particles 4.0026. And notice something. The mass in use is pretty much equal to this nucleon number, isn't it? Look, radium is 226. Radium, it's pretty much 226. It's point stuff. And we normally go to four decimal points here. And then radon is 222. Hey, look, it's 222. And alpha is supposed to be four. It's supposed to be four. So if we want to know how much energy is released, well, then we need to take a look at binding energy, each reaction. And so we need to then take a look at E equals mc squared. And remember, the m in that has to do with mass defect, which means we need to calculate the mass of the left side and the right side. And we'll see that there's a difference, and we'll use that. So let's just say LHS for left-hand side. And we'll do the mass here. So this is mass of the left-hand side is, well, it's simple. It's just 226.0254U. The right-hand side mass, however, is going to be, well, 222.0176 plus this mass here. So I'm just going to do this right here on my calculator just to make it a little bit more straightforward. So I'm also going to need this number dialed in, so I'll just do it now. So 222.0176 plus 4.0026, and I get an answer then of 226.0202U. And from there then, this is the key thing. So what's the mass defect? Do you notice this one right here is a little bit lighter than that one? You normally have to go to four decimal places to really see excitement happening here. So uh, with four decimal places, you can see it happening. So then what you could do then is say, okay, well, that means then the mass defect, in other words, the missing mass, is just going to be this mass minus that one. So 226.0254 minus that answer. And I get 0.0052U. 
that's the mass defect. Now here's the key thing. We don't need to convert this to joules, uh, sorry, to kilograms or anything like that. Let's leave it. So now we use this equation, E equals mc squared. Right, because we actually, we want this energy. We want the energy that's released. So if I use that, then I just put in my mass. This is the mass here that I put in. So I have 0 0.0052. And then what I do is I multiply that by u. And remember, 1u is the same thing as 931.5 MeV for every c squared. And uh, so that I've just taken care of M. So my M has two terms now, right? Because I have this times U. So this is what I've done. I've taken care of M. I still need C squared. Do you see something nice happening here? There's a reason why we use this. This is awesome because look, this C squared cancels out that C squared. Ta-da! And then what we can do is we've already got our things in MEV, so I just have to multiply these two numbers together. 0 0.0052 times 931.5, and I'm done. That's it. So then I have, finally, that the energy then is going to be 4.8438 mega electron volts. That's all you have to do. That's how you solve these. If you leave things in U, for example, then it's really easy and there's really nothing to do, right? So the key was to take the mass here, the mass defect, and multiply that uh, by what u is. And if you look at that then, the c squared canceled out, we've already got our energy in MeV. This is actually why we like to use these types of units. Hopefully you see that that's how we can make uh, maybe what looks like a complicated uh, question look really simple. Now, of course, we have this stuff here happening a lot inside um, nuclear reactors, for example. Every time that happens, there's energy released. That's what's happening uh, every second in the sun. I mean, the sun is a giant fusion reactor. In other words, it's taking hydrogen uh, atoms and putting them together and making helium. And every time it does that, there's energy released. And this energy is in the form of, well, lots of other things, but mainly light. And that's why the sun gives off lots of light. It's a big fusion reactor. And now just to go over the difference between fission and fusion, fusion is when you take light atoms and make heavier atoms. Fission is when you do the opposite. You take heavy things and make lighter things. So for example, when I was showing you... Um, when I was showing you uranium-238, for example, that undergoes fission, which means you start off with something uh, massive and you make something less massive. But you can actually also go from less massive to more massive. Uh, it's something in astrophysics we call the proton-proton cycle. It turns out you don't just have two hydrogens making a helium. You actually have to go through a process and do it a couple times. But in the end, you end up with helium. So that's kind of cool. But uh, what you end up doing is uh, you're releasing energy every time you have these reactions. In the sun, this energy then, like I said, is used to give us light. Uh, in a nuclear reactor, that energy is used to uh, heat up water, make it steam. The steam turns a turbine. That turbine uh, makes electricity. So it's actually pretty straightforward uh, what happens here. So hopefully that's a good example and that helps to illustrate how it is that we can use E equals MC squared in a more practical setting.